We'll call the November 8th meeting of the Planning Commission order. We'll begin with the pledge to the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of, of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jess, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Varga. Here. Mr. Cicero. Excused. Mr. Cook. Here. Mr. Perkovic. Excused. Mr. Sedoti. Here. Mr. Tiedemann. Here. Mr. Snow. Here. I entertain a motion for the approval of the minutes of the October 18th meeting. So moved. Second. Just when you're ready. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Sedoti. Yes. Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Snow. Yes. We have one public hearing this evening, and the format we follow for public hearings is we allow the applicant an opportunity to tell us what they want to do at a particular location. Then anyone else wishing to speak in favor is afforded an opportunity. Then those wishing to speak against are given a similar opportunity. So with that in mind, the first public hearing this evening is a conditional use permit to allow Child Daycare Center at 9383 Heisley Road. Is that applicant here? Would you come forward and identify yourself for the clerk, please? My name is Anita Docolari. I'm here to represent My Kids Child Care. And give us a quick overview of what you want to do at that location. Uh, we would like to open a um, child care facility that will care for children from six weeks all the way to age 14. Okay. Is there anyone? I'm assuming that's the gist of it. The gist of it. That's really the gist okay. of it, yes. So anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay, we'll close the public hearing and allow for questions of the administration by Planning Commission members or uh, to you. So, Hi. anybody have any questions? Public hearing is closed? No. Oh. The public hearing is closed, yeah. All right. I have yeah. some questions. Go right ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, you're, you're currently operating at uh, 6135 Hygely down by Pinecone? That is correct. Is that facility going to remain open, or are you closing it and just relocating? No, we're actually going to remain open there as well. So you're going to have two facilities? That's correct. Okay. Uh, at this current location, yeah, I know it's been used as a daycare in the past, but the one concern I have is the so-called play area in the back. It's, it's, to me, I mean, it may meet state state code, but to me, it, it just appears to be very inadequate. You have to walk the kids across that circulation drive. You have to make sure those gates are closed. And then you're putting them in this so-called play area that's very narrow and long. You've got one piece of play equipment in there now. I don't know how many other things you can put in there and have room for the kids to move it almost looks like you're in there like this because it's very narrow that that concerns me especially when i see the play area you have now at pinecone the only concern i had there was it was so close to the street but at least it was fenced and you've got equipment in there you got a nice surface you know i know it's supervised uh that's the only drawback that i have at this location here is that play area okay I can understand from your point of view as an adult, looking at the space itself, it might appear that it's small, but from children's point of view, their feet and their running will take a lot more steps to cross the playing field. Uh, so far, the place has been utilized in the past safely, where they had used the gates to cross in the back to the playground. As long as the traffic flow is controlled there, um, it is a safe place for the children to be at. Has there ever been an attempt to maybe lease a little bit more of that green space going to the east from the adjacent property owner, some simple lease or use agreement just to give a little bit wider area for the kids to play? In the past, uh, the previous uh, facility that was there, they were using the greenery area by the fire department to have picnics on the outside and in the shaded area. But that is not part of our lease this evening, no. In your facility, do you have an AED, automatic external defibrillator, in the event there's a problem? Uh, as of right now, it is not equipped. Are, are you anticipating on providing uh, that at this yes. current location? Mm -hmm. 
I think that's important, especially Absolutely. with the children. Absolutely. We do uh, intend to follow the state rules and have the full fire inspection come in before we even take children in. So as part of the uh, licensing procedure that is part of the fire department coming in and assuring that the children that are designated in each classroom do have the direct access to uh, going outside for safety purposes of vacating the premises and things like that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I do have a question. Yes. Not that it matters at this point, but okay. we heard that you were perhaps looking at another site as well. Is that is that dead or is that coming to fruition? Uh, dead, I don't know. Um, I will be completely honest with you. Um, myself, along with the other businesses that are in a child care field, we have been experiencing a high demand calls uh, in regards to quality daycare centers. So that, um, that, that could be a third location at some point. It could be a third. It could be a second with potential one closing down uh, just because of the square footage. Um, the first facility, the facility that you're referring to, um, it is extremely large. It does have a gymnasium inside that would give children a place to uh, be physically active uh, during winter. As you guys experience the, the weather here in Ohio, it can be pretty brutal. So it is important for our children to move um, and have that type of space. But it, it has not been dismissed. Okay. I was just curious. Okay. Well, I hope I acknowledge your curiosity. So I have a question for the administration. Does the daycare facility as it previously existed, does that meet the requirements for the area behind the building where the children play? I'm, the previous daycare facility, the, the, the requirements for the children's play area, did that meet the city requirements? We actually don't have any set requirements for the play area. I know, but it had to be blocked from traffic and stuff like that. Well, so you're talking about the, the this address in question then? Yes. Yes, it had met the requirements. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Go right ahead, Mr. Sedoni. You will be occupying all three units right up to Regency loan? I believe so, yes. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, commissioners? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Motion, let's see. Motion to approve with uh, the two conditions. Two, okay. second. Yes. Yeah. yes, when you're ready. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Sidoti. Yes. Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Snow. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. There is no old business under new business. Architecture review reimaging a commercial building at 8360 Broadmoor. Is that applicant here? Just in the nick of time, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Go right ahead. I got my exercise as well. <laughs> Three flights of stairs. Did you sprint the last 100 feet? Sorry? Did you sprint the last 100 feet? I should have, and I would have been exactly on time, so I apologize for the yeah, that's, interruption. That's fine. <laughs> right ahead tell us what you want to do at that location okay thank you um, first of all my name is Neil Jacob I'm here with National Illumination um, and we are looking to do basically what I would call a refresh of the location can you hear me okay I don't want to yell um, what we're looking to do is uh, is really not that different than what is currently there um, BP has a new image uh, they used to have uh, a slightly different logo look uh, it's called a Helios. That Helios looks a little bit different now in the upgraded versions. Um, so they're looking to do that on uh, on three sides of the canopy there. Um, and actually, I was by the location again today. And uh, I'll tell you, from if you're coming there from here, you really can't even see the location until you... Yeah, but we all, we all know where it is. Oh, okay, sure. I mean. um, so, yes, what we're looking to do is just freshen up the image. Um, upgraded to the newest image and uh, primarily, which I don't really believe is necessarily part of this discussion, but the short version is the monument sign, they want to put LED prices in there for safety reasons. Um, everybody that can do it is trying to do that these days, it's just safer to do it. Um, so the price signs currently are manual price signs and they want to change those to LED price signs. That's not true. But, uh, well, the city had a comment in their staff report about, <coughs> about covering up brick. Any comments on that? Covering up brick. Covering up brick on the pillars. About that. 
receive our staff report. On the back side? Yes, I did. Unfortunately, I did not get to read that. I'm sorry. Um, or no, I'm sorry. What what was the what's the concern? There's a there's a, a break. Come to it. I can, so I on, can the, on the on the um, it doesn't have a page reference, but on the second uh, page of the of the of the drawing, um, it's labeled number two. Um, it, it's indicated that uh, the uh, current columns are going to be covered with this green stripe, and um, we're recommending that the brick remain exposed and not covered with the stripe. There's not an issue with the pump numbers. It's the issue with the covering of the existing brick. See, we work very hard to get to the brick columns yeah, put in. I see that, and I don't actually even see a, a, where we're. Right. Sure, and those are unfortunately what they've incorporated into some of this. The, the image company that puts this together, which we didn't put these renderings together, the LSI did this. Um, that's a generic drawing, so I apologize for that confusion if that's okay. what was created here. Um, I understand the brick columns. Almost everywhere you see a brick column anywhere at a gas station, uh, they're preferred to be kept. I mean, they're very expensive on top of that, so I mean, I can't imagine they would want to cover them. Um, this is a standard drawing that you see in that, in that third page of rendering, if mm -hmm. you will. Uh, there's the cover page, and then it'd be the two, second page after that. Um, so, no, I, I understand. If, if you want to keep the brick, I think that's the intention is to still keep the brick. So it's, a, wanna, it's a non issue. We do not want to cover the brick. No covering of the brick. Understood. Okay. Brick as is on the columns, correct? So we'll put that in as a condition. It's already in. It's number one. I know, but we'll put it in as a condition. It'll stay as a condition. I want to add a couple conditions, and I realize you're, you're just the sign guys, so to speak. But I want to make it clear to the property owner and to whoever else it needs to be clear to that there is no outside storage or display of any merchandise. Okay. Now, I realize it's beyond your scope of what well, you're here for. Certainly, but my job is also to pass along any of your wishes to them so that we can be in compliance. Okay. So, understood. That's, that's another concern. Then the, the fourth concern in addition is the ice machine out in front, the ice storage area. Okay. I don't know how long that's been there, but we've, I'm gonna ask the administration, was that on the original plan? Do we know, Larry? I'm gonna to have to say probably not, but without actually looking at the plan, because usually we don't approve those out there. I know, that's that's my concern. I mean, yeah. we've taken other people to task in the city for for that. I think we need to be cognizant of the fact that if it's not on the plan, it needs it needs to go. Condition to remove the ice. Yeah, if, I mean, if, if it was on the plan and it was approved by planning commission, that's one thing. If it was never on the plan, was never approved, then it's got to go. Aren't you, aren't you glad you sprinted the last 100 feet up the steps? I am, actually, yes. Thank you. I'm glad I get to hear all this. It's important. Uh, do we uh, do we have a condition to possibly relocate it somewhere? Is there somewhere better that it should be put or should not yeah, be put in? I think inside would be good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. They probably have coolers in there. That'd be a good place I, to keep I, it, right? I, I would think. So. It's, it's kind of a, a null and void point right now anyway. I mean, who gets ice in the winter anyway, right? Well, I, I imagine some people do. <laughs> uh, we're not coming to your house for the Super Bowl party, are we? Um, <laughs> it'd be a long drive. Okay. I do throw a pretty good party, though. I, I mean, that's up to you. I can leave you my card. Okay. <laughs> so, no outside the storage and display. Yes, sir. And the ice machine, if it wasn't on the original plans, got to go. It's pretty succinct. Any other questions, comments from the commission? I just have one question. Um, th could you describe the, uh, it's described as a light bar on, on this is that an exposed lighting element, or is it back, or is it just the green strip is backlit, or how how does that work? Great question. the the uh, the, the green stripe is uh, is an LED strip. It's uh, about one inch in diameter, um, about in this in this mm -hmm. basic size. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, it, it's uh, an LED strip that is actually internally illuminated. So think of it as a fluorescent light bulb, sort of, but sure. dimmer and green, and it's LED. So. And is it ex directly exposed, or is it behind like a plastic? It's, it's mounted to the face. So you, okay, so, so it's a green LED. It's a green strip. plastic bar with LEDs okay. inside of it. I understand. Any comments from the administration on the LED? Yeah, no. No, other than the comments that I've already made. Okay. Staff report. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Sedoti. Uh, Mr. Zeman, I read in the staff report that the planning commission. Uh, originally, when this first came about in June of 2002, said there shall be no LED lighting on the canopy. So are we going to need to rescind that condition in order to allow it in this uh, presentation? Well, uh, tonight, tonight's action, whatever the commission's you know, ultimate decision is, it supersedes you know, that, that prior approval. Thank you. Any other questions? Any comments from the administration? Additional comments? Nothing, Mr. Chairman. I'll entertain a motion with the conditions I illuminated earlier. Motion to approve with four conditions. Condition three being that the uh, there shall be no outside storage or displaying of merchandise. Correct. And the fourth is that the ice machine shall be removed provided, however, does not appear on the original plan as approved by the commission. So be it. Second. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Sedoti. Yes. Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Snow. Yes. Thank you very much for your time, ladies and gentlemen. Item three, preliminary site plan for an office building at 7473 Center Street at the law firm of Myers, Carver, and Carver. <laughs> Gentlemen, if you'd identify yourself for the clerk, please. I'm Randy Carver. Hi, building owner, Joe Myers, architect for the project. <laughs> okay. Give us an overview of what you want to do there. Um, We'd like to stay in Menor, and I'm running out of space. I've uh, grown from about 11 people to 22 in the last couple of years. I want to hire about five more, but I'm completely out of space. We want to expand the building, <clears throat> but essentially make it look like the original building. Gotcha. We don't want it to look like an addition. So as such, we just want to uh, push the building back. You don't, you don't want to buy the property to the north? Unfortunately. Um, we can't. It's so polluted. Nobody's going to be able to buy that property. Right. We did a phase one and a phase two on that. It's it's unbuildable. Hmm. Well, Excuse me. What's the polluted? What kind of pollution is there? I was a dry cleaner for about 30 oh. years. Mm -hmm. They dumped the materials directly in the ground. Oh. Um, we had HCW do. I spent quite a bit of money uh, when we did the original addition. Uh, we went back to look at it a year ago, and it's, it's just unbuildable. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, you know, the, the original Carver building, I don't know if you can see these are not showing up on the camera. Um, there we go. So this is the building now that you're probably familiar with on Center Street. Uh, you know, it started out as an old bank they did in addition to the front uh, a number of years ago that uh, to provide the additional offices the idea now is the existing site is some parking in the back the main entrance actually enters through the back of the building there's some parking in a lot behind it for additional overflow parking we want are going to extend the building out into uh, the parking in the back and extend the parking across the additional lot that's in the behind the building to provide the new parking for the addition. The, the new addition, you know, would look very much like the front of the building, same colors, same gray stucco, the, 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 uh, the tan trim. Uh, and then the entranceway would be facing the parking lot, which is in the back. 
very similar to uh, the, the look of the front of the building, but since all the parking's in the back, that this would be really the main entrance to the building coming from the back. Uh, I know that the, uh, the staff report commented that we needed a landscape plan. I know that we've submitted one since then. I don't know if they've had the chance to, to review in the, the whole thing, but uh, we do have a landscape plan and also the photometrics for the site for any parking lot lighting that were required. These were both mentioned in the contingency or in the, the conditions at the end of the staff report. Uh, we have them with them. We've submitted them since the original submission. Okay. So we're, hope, we're hoping for preliminary approval of the concept tonight, and then we'll you know develop engineering drawings from there. Okay. So are we talking a preliminary tonight or preliminary and final tonight? Uh, preliminary? Larry? That's what the application states was a preliminary. Normally with something like this, because it's an addition to the building, we do one review for the commission. If there's concerns, Kathy and I had talked about it, maybe instead of bringing them back as a separate review, it be tabled tonight so those concerns can be addressed. Six of one, half a dozen of another that way, right? I mean, truthfully. Any, any thoughts? We're happy to answer any questions you have. I think the one... If we could get preliminary and final tonight, that'd yeah. be great. Or if you have questions, we'll answer them. I think administratively, we still got to submit engineering that they'll follow up on, you know, drainage and those kinds of things. Building materials will be the same as what's there. Exactly the same as what's there. Uh, it's, you know, the. I got to blow up of it. It's brick and stucco, basically. I know. So it would be a continuation of the red brick. That wainscot would continue around the whole addition, uh, the whole new addition. Uh, the field is the, the gray stucco, all the, the trim is the, the tan. We'd match the, the roof shingles, and so all the materials would be the same, which we'd really, we're hoping to, you know, tie the building all together. Now, you know, the back of the building was the original building. They put the, uh, the more, I guess, contemporary version on the front, and as we put that same thing on the back, we don't want one piece in the middle with a different look on both sides, so we continued it all the way through so that, um, you know, they would be consistent as far as the, the window patterns and materials. Okay. Commissioners, any questions for the applicant or the administration? Mr. Snow, I have a question. Go right ahead. Um, if you put the existing photo back so that we can see it in the rear, rear it, the, the rendering looks a little different in terms of the colors than the... Are, are you intending it yeah, to... Yeah, no, it, it looked... Very much the same when I looked at it on the computer. When I got it printed I out, it's okay. a little grayer. I know, I the intention is that they, they would be tan bands, and the, the gray would be the same as the and the and the stuff. and the the part that's the lobby would also be the same as the tan enclosure in the front. Well, it would be. It's the we're intending to do this out of stucco in the back, scored stucco. Okay. But it would be the same color tan as the trim on the rest of the building. Okay. So it, it kind of has that same tan look as the front. It looks, but it it's looks not the stone, same. It's stucco. I yes. was just questioning the colors. Yes, That's but it. it's the color will be the same. And I, and I noticed we do have the staff exhibit of a suggested parking change, but then I noticed. It, could you put the site plan back on? Could yeah, you have another? We resubmitted have another? a plan that uh, they had a, they went along with the staff's recommendation. Uh, the original plan that we submitted, you know, because the existing parking lot kind of comes around and spreads into this, um, it went in both directions, and the staff said, you know, that makes a dead end in each direction. We'd much rather have a loop. We resubmitted this afterward. They okay. seemed to like this. Uh, was pretty consistent with I, what they I were I like that better of all of the points. I, I think we, we all did, too. Did. Yeah, it's a great idea. It was a good, yeah, good, yeah, good suggestion you. by the right. staff. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? If not, I'll entertain a motion for a preliminary and final site plan approval. Motion to approve with uh, four conditions. Second. Yes, when you're ready. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Sedoti. Yes. Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Snow. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Miscellaneous review of three trailers at 6951 Center Street. Fred Hansen, Tally CM, representing Classic Mazda. Uh, we're here wanting to extend what uh, our current time period for the trailers, uh, which is December this year, extending it out to May 1st, 2019. Unfortunately, due to some existing conditions during construction, has tremendously delayed our project. Uh, so 
because we need the trailers out there longer. Uh, current right now, we're hoping to be done by end of March 2019, but as the, if we get any more into, or foreseen conditions and the winter weather is we'll obviously have to keep delaying us so, even further along. So you think till May is long enough? Correct. Okay. Yes, we, we don't plan on going that long, but as we want to make sure we're covered and don't have to come back again. It's not that we don't enjoy seeing you. <laughs> <laughs> been been here for a lot for between know, that and the car wash. <laughs> how's that? How's that coming? By the way, just as a side, the car wash. Yeah. Uh, finally getting things back on track. So we submitted in for resubmitted back in for the uh, site permit. We've submitted in for a foundation permit, and then we have everything into the the county in Ocala, Ohio. So hopefully we can start moving along again. Gotcha. Didn't mean to get off the subject, nope, but that's fine. Just curious. No, we got unfortunately we got delayed on the car wash with the company we're working with for the building itself. Up for the prefab thing, we got they kind of took a whole lot longer to get what we needed, so it's set everything back. So, commissioners, any questions for the applicant on the extension? Administratively, do we have any concerns? No, we don't. No? Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve with, I guess, three, three conditions. Second. Just when you're ready. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Sedoti. Yes. Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Snow. Yes. All right, thank you. Miscellaneous review to transfer a CUP at 90 or 5957 Heisley with the boys from Point Blank. Good evening. Tell us, tell us what you want to do. Well, the um, the conditional use permit that was issued to me personally and to my LLC back in 2013 uh, is going to change, and I just need to get my name removed from the conditional use permit. Okay. That's what I'm here so for tonight. So the operation doesn't change? Nothing changes. Nothing changes other than the ownership of the, of the operation, right? That's correct. Okay. Any comments from the law department? Any comments from the administration? I have no comment. Uh, you know, again, this was a, a brand new use in the city. Uh, there was a code amendment which facilitated its construction, and I think uh, having the uh, the operator, uh, Mr. Holt's name down there, was part of a, a little of a, a cautious approach just to make sure that w if there were any problems, we had a, a good, solid mechanism for enforcement. I I'm not aware of any uh, of any operation operational issues at the facility, and um, uh, again, I think that the change in uh, the ownership structure. Uh, really is not uh, something that causes much uh, concern on the legal side of things. Now, in, in the staff report, they mentioned the comment about the police department having the proper permits there. It's all been taken care of. Okay. So we're good. Any other questions for the applicant, Mr. Sedoti? So the, uh, if we approve this tonight, the CUP will be in the name of just the LLC That's or the LLC and your minority owner, as it's, I read that in. Just the LLC is my understanding. So it'll just be in the LLC. Correct. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Entertain a motion. Motion to approve with three conditions. Is there a second? Second. Yes, when you're ready. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Sedoti. Yes. Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Snow. Yes. You're off the hook. Thank you, Mr. Snow. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Preliminary site plan with maintenance and office building at 6881 Hopkins by the City of Menor. Who's going to do that presentation? I, I believe uh, the representatives from Burgess and Naipaul are here to, to do that presentation. Are you the guys from Burgess and Naipaul? We are. Yes, okay, sir. you can come forward then. Sorry, that's so dead in here, really. I know. <laughs> Don't, that's put, a, don't put your day job. <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke you were supposed to say. Somebody sitting behind you. But I'm from. Symbols. Yeah, yeah. Wants <laughs> 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 to hold that for you? Well, I have a. I don't know if you want me on that. You know what? <laughs> Throw a golf ball out the window. <laughs> Why 
Here we go. Oh, you got the other one too, yeah. Either way. You got all the same. But I'm uh, Mark Hudson with Burgess and Ipoh. With me here is my architect, uh, Ray Delamont, uh, also with Burgess and Ipoh. And we're here to present the new cemetery building for the city of Menor. Okay. Any comments from the administration relative to the building? I love it. It, look, it looks nice. Yeah, it does. It looks very historic, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So, commissioners, any questions for the applicant? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Right ahead. Parking just remains on those undedicated side Roads. Just the way it's been for yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, you know, we're kind of landlocked by right. the residents. Right. right. Um, that's, that's not fine. the ones that are above ground. I mean, you know, so there's not much room to to uh, expand uh, parking. So. So, any other questions, Mr. Chairman? Mr. S Mr. Varga. Um, building looks nice. I, I think it's a, a great improvement over what's there now. Um, just one question, very simple. Uh, you're maintaining the electric transformer on the ground behind the building, between uh, the building and the and the property line. Look, at, I believe it is. I think we are. Yeah. Yes. The, uh, yeah. It it says it on C two. It says it. Uh, they're still right. Yes. What what we would like, what we always ask for for ground mounted mechanical or electrical equipment is to have it shielded. Uh, I don't know that we need a fence, but we certainly would like maybe some non-deciduous uh, plantings, uh, shrub r around at least the north, east, and south side, sure. okay. not towards the building. You want to make that a condition? That would be a condition. Okay. It is under item two if you I want to be more specific, oh, okay. but it is there. Okay. It's, uh, it is, it is, this, I, I'm sorry. I didn't it see says it. landscaping should be provided around the building. All mechanical utility units and dumpsters shall be screened from view. Right. It says that, but I just wanted to make sure it applied to that specific piece of equipment. Yeah. And you've got the building materials. You want to cover those real quick? We do. Yeah, we have the different materials that are going to be used on the building. Right in front of um, We spent some time picking these out with the people we're working with, with Mr. Um, Kaminsky and, and uh, Mr. Filipiak. And we got to a point where we had the rock face that we wanted that we found out it's discontinued, okay? So that's always, so we've, we've gone to another, it's called a, more of a, It's a, a rolled shape instead of a chiseled shape. Um, same color, same. And this is the flat, smooth base for the uh, end walls and the copings and things. So, so there's an existing mausoleum on site, which is not far from this building, part of the uh, facility. And this uh, stone right here actually matches really, really close. Matter of fact, if you put it up, we have a picture. But if we if you put it up against it, you almost can't tell that this is not the same stone. So it was actually kind of uh, the fact that the manufacturer stopped producing this and offered this in, in lieu of it was actually a good thing because it, it's it's spot on. So so these would be on the on these areas that you see, you know, in the uh, which is the majority of the field, you know, on the uh, <coughs> south uh, south elevation, uh, west elevation. You'll see a lot of that material. Uh, the other material, Ray, did you want to, this material here is more of a stand, a sandstone uh, type. And that's the and smooth, <laughs> smooth finish. And these, these units are actually going to be one foot by two foot in size. Yeah. And they're the end walls that you see there mm -hmm. that the, um, that the uh, rock face, <clears throat> pump face mm -hmm. stone comes into. And the, it'll be the copings also in the sills on the windows. A um, little overhang that's on this facade, that is the kiosk where you're going to be able to go up and press in and see where Aunt Mabel is living or see what um, lots are available for purchase and it'll tell the history of the existing cemetery. Hmm. It's kind of a neat little thing. It's not an ATM. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, comments? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Sedoni. When do you anticipate the BOSA hearing on the setback, side setback? 
that'll be uh, next Tuesday, I believe. Yeah. Next Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, the, in, in the, the existing building, um, which of course will have to be demoed to construct the new uh, facility, the footprint is, is on top of. So it, it's not really any change to what's already there, right. the conditions that are already there. But on that, what's your timeline? Commencement and completion? As, as far as the... Your pro for the whole project? The project would, would bid out early, uh, probably early next year, and we're probably looking at a one, uh, probably spring about a start. Yeah, spring start, and then hopefully by the end of the year we'd be occupying the building. The city would be occupying the building. The city has um, anticipating temporary quarters or something on that site mm -hmm. to carry out their operations. So we can go right in and. Well, we know where they can get the trailers. <laughs> you have the trailers. Yeah. 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 That gentleman. Yeah. You have the supply? Yeah. Well, good. I think he's gone. So. Get them cheap. <laughs> Timeline should work out pretty favorably for you. I mean, in terms of the trailers. Yeah, or all. Is he a commission or something? No, I'm just being a smart aleck. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? I entertain a motion. Motion to approve with the uh, four conditions. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Sedoti. Yes. Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Snow. Yes. So you leave the samples from Larry. Larry, do you got the samples, the numbers off of there? Yeah. Okay. So we're good. Yeah, we'll take them for now. I think. Yeah. I think they come. Or you can take them for now, sir. You don't want to carry them out to the car? Yeah, they, <laughs> I was gonna say, maybe Ken carry. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Item seven. Bring him over and he had a courier. Code amendments. Do you want to Thank talk you about all. the code amendment tonight? Thank, Thank you. you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Commission members. Uh, submitted for your uh, you know review and uh, if you're prepared to make recommendation tonight was a potential code amendment. It kind of a. Uh, bootstraps a little bit on the first application uh, for a conditional use permit for the uh, child daycare center. I know that applicant mentioned, you know, the kind of the market need for this type of facility. Um, obviously, they're, they're, they're serving a, 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 a marketplace, which is, is the residential areas of, uh, of the city, um, bringing traffic in, bringing the kids in, of course, uh, to the commercial districts. And so the question was presented as to whether or not some of the you know, current um, institutional uses or st structures uh, in an R4 district specifically might be suitable locations uh, with a conditional use permit to put in a child daycare facility. Now those are the houses of worship, the schools, um, you know, other types of, you know, specific use facilities uh, that tend to already exist there. Um, we're not talking necessarily about a, you know, conversion of an existing residential structure uh, into something that would be uh, commercial in nature, uh, nor the construction of something new. Uh, but again, sort of an adaptive uh, reuse or, or uh, you know, an expansion of an existing use uh, in those areas to facilitate these, uh, these types of things. Uh, you did see a proposal. It, it, it didn't really um, get, get to the point of recommendation, but uh, there was a request for kind of a rezoning to general business uh, in an R4 district for a, for a facility that's been uh, somewhat underutilized for a very, very long time. And um, again, that suggests that uh, these might be appropriate locations uh, you know, for this type of use and that uh, they may serve uh, an important uh, market demand, but also uh, complement the residential character of the neighborhood. Uh, now, again, uh, we're not looking that these would be on side streets or anything of that nature. So uh, one of the suggestions is you know, try to narrow uh, the exact location so that they would be on you know, streets that actually carry significant traffic, be it a minor or a major or an arterial uh, roadway system. Uh, now, that, now that could be narrowed even further. Um, but we're looking uh, generally at some of the, and again, these are just R4, but, you know, areas along Lakeshore Boulevard, uh, Route 306, um, you know, Route 84, of course, um, a little bit of Bellflower and, uh, and some of those areas. Uh, of course, Hopkins, uh, part of Heisley would, you know, would also, you know, potentially fit. So, um, so with that, there were some there were some suggestions. Uh, we did not mean those suggestions to, to necessarily be the end all be all uh, of additional regulations uh, if this code amendment were allowed. But I do recommend that again we want to make sure that that we don't get into um, 
uh, a lot of disputes relative to uh, the types of facilities where these could locate, the locations where they could locate, and, and some of the other operational things. Again, I'd rather, uh, I'd rather suggest that those be, uh, you know, hard code items uh, so that, um, you know, we're not debating over the more general conditions of the CUP and what may or may not be appropriate in a particular case. But of course, you know, that, that's still, you know, all fair game relative to additional uh, conditions uh, that may be responsive to a specific location, specific use, specific uh, adjacent properties. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions and uh, appreciate any feedback the Commission can provide. Questions, comments? Uh, I, have, right I have a question. Uh, if, if you, and, and I understand it's, maybe I don't completely understand the idea behind this, um, you would want to make the daycare child care daycare facility uh, a, a conditional use in an R4 but only in a only in a reused location not a new construction correct and and can can you do can you restrict it like that we can try well okay that's what i was <laughs> that was yeah. kind of the question i mean if, if it's I mean, someone could come up and say, well, if it's, it's, it's a conditional use for an R4, why can't I put up a building on a, a reasonably sized vacant lot to do the same thing? Well, the, the code would prohibit that. It just needs to have a rational basis. And our issue is with the rational basis. Again, you've got existing facilities yeah. that are already located in the R4. Mm -hmm. They don't seem to go anywhere. Uh, in other words, you, you, you perhaps may expect that um, if a school closed, it would get demoed and, and the site redeveloped. But the economics of that doesn't really pencil out. Uh -huh. So we've seen some, some pretty old, you know, facilities there. Uh, the old Society for Rehabilitation is kind of a key example where you think it's, it's, it's reached the end of its economic life, and yet it hasn't. Again, and, and we know anecdotally that developers have looked at it, but the costs of acquisition, demolition, the, uh -huh. the deals just don't pencil out. And so we've got something there that languishes and is maybe underutilized, and the question is, can it be repurposed into something that's sure. an asset no, to the I, neighborhood. I think it's a good idea. I, I, I'm just wondering if, if you could actually restrict it to only reuse or re redevelopment rather than new. And, and you're saying you can, so that's fine. That's. I think it has a rational basis, as yeah. I've just elaborated. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Mr. Sedoti. Yeah, I appreciate the foresight by the administration because when my kid's child care was anticipating coming before us, for that building on Lakeshore, that former church slash rehab center, you know, across from Klusnik's down close to 44. I think you just referred to the property. Correct. It's been underutilized for many years. Had they come before us, I thought that was a pretty decent property for a daycare. Uh, it had a lot of nice amenities. The building was in pretty decent condition. What I didn't like had it come before us was the use spot zoning to make it work and then I could see other people or other projects coming before us. And in order to make it work, we had to maybe do a zoning change. Having this allowed with a CUP and an R4, I think that's a, it's a good tool. So I appreciate that. Thanks. So what action are you looking for from us? Well, recommendation. If the commission's prepared to uh, make recommendation for the city council, that's great. Uh, I had a few blanks in there just because uh, I'm not a planner. I didn't know what might be appropriate in terms of additional setbacks for the outdoor play area, for example, or things of that nature. So I was hoping to get a little bit of feedback relative to you know some of the nuts and bolts, if, if necessary, um, or if that's something that you know, have to get that specific, um, the general conditions. Um, you know, can, can be reviewed and, and... And you can adjust as you go along? Is that what your thought is? Well, again, it was just a suggestion. This was just not intended to, to be a complete itemization of, of all the areas of potential concern. But uh, I, know, I know in the past, outdoor activity areas um, where they might be adjacent to a residential use, because obviously we do have some of these facilities that are directly against to existing residentially zoned areas, the location of the outdoor play area has been a source of concern in mitigating any sound. Uh, for those adjacent neighbors. I, I don't know if a hard setback is necessary as opposed to something that, that can be handled um, you know, through, the, through the general analysis um, that you're still allowed to do uh, pursuant to the conditional use permits. I know on occasion there was some concern about traffic flow adjacent to a play area, and I think that's why you see a lot of boulders around town, especially I'm thinking of the one right over here at the corner of... Uh, Munson and Munson and 615, next to the pizza. I mean, 
you know, you try to shield this from vehicular traffic as best you can. So I think that's what we, we need to be concerned about that as well, not just the noise in, in the residential area, but the safety of children in the proximity it is to a major thoroughfare. Just a thought. Of course. And the precise location of the outdoor you know, play area is still something that, that uh, can be handled through a condition. Um, it, now, if, if it needs to be behind the facility under all cases, or it needs to be, you know, bes beside, you know, bes beside the building under all cases, um, you know, it'd be great to have that specific, you know, language in there. Um, but again, I, I, and I don't know how, how, you know, hard and rigid uh, some of the additional regulations truly need to be. Uh, again, if it's if it's something that's going to always be a problem, then that's then that's appropriate for a hard regulation. If it's something that has to be reviewed on a case by case basis, well, then we refer back to the general permit conditions. And and again, it's there's, there's always the opportunity to review items such as that on a case by case basis. Well, I I would think that if you're concerned about or we would or we would be concerned about how close a play area could be to say a residential property. I, I, you know, comes to mind at least 50 feet would be, you know, a, a number that would somewhat mitigate the source of noise or visual activity, stuff like that, the play. So I, I, I'm thinking, you know, 50 feet might be some place to look at or start for the for the recreation for the outside activity. I, I saw a reaction. Go ahead. So in the in in Joe's. Uh, draft he references section 116211 for the buffering requirements and in taking a look at that for child daycare centers within <clears throat> any adjacent to any residential district the minimum buffer requirement is 25 feet so if you want to be higher than that needs to change I guess with regard to that I mean I guess you could you could just refer directly to that section um, or you could put the standard in there itself. Well, I was just thinking about sound. You know, 25 feet is, is from here to the wall. You know, I'm not sure that's really sufficient for sound. It, I'm not trying to impose that. I was just thinking, you know, try to mitigate a, 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 a foreseen issue. I, I'm, we... Um, if it was a like a business, if it was a business, and uh, it was next to residential, a fifty foot buffer comes into play at some point, correct? For the play area. Yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking about it. it well, you know, it depends. Just, again, it depends on the use, the size of the of the structure, a couple different things. So, yeah. um, that particular chart I was. You just referred to 1160 to 11. It does make distinctions, again, based on the land use, based on the adjoining uh, district, and then in, in part also based on size of the, of the use. Mm -hmm. So the larger, obviously, the larger the buffer. Um, so, you know, we, and we did do um, some uh, research of some other communities um, we did see one as high as 50 feet. We also saw them in the area of 20, 25 feet mm -hmm. as well. So I guess it's just depending on what we're comfortable with. Um, I, I think at, the, at this point, maybe you want to make it such that you can tackle them on a case-by-case -case basis. I mean, where it makes, you know, where it makes sense, you, you increase it. Where it doesn't make sense, you could decrease it. Well, you know, this this property being a good example, I mean, it's, it's got a lot of land area there, so it has flexibility. You might not have a, a parcel with this much land area, and it might be a little bit restrictive. To right. That's why, I, that's, I guess that's my point. You could, you could have it flow with whatever you need to have it flow with. Go ahead, Mr. Sedoni. Uh, Mr. Snow's remarks <clears throat> to allow the child daycare center in the R4 is going to require a CUP, correct? And the CUP must come before the Planning Commission. So what he was just discussing, these minute details, although very necessary, can be discussed and ironed out at each of our meetings. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. 
Again, you don't have to have necessarily hard numbers. Um, do, do I like them as a lawyer? Absolutely. You know, to, you foreclose any debate on the issues. But uh, again, uh, the reason that there are sort of general permit conditions and NCUPs are reviewed on a case by case basis is because. Just, you know, out you know, curiosity, just out of curiosity, what was that building before it was the Society for Rehabilitation? I thought it was constructed for that purpose. Is that what it was? Correct. Yes. Okay. So, just as a point of information, how did that, how did that, was, how was that able to occur? Uh, there's a code amendment that allowed it. Okay. Just curious. There was specific language for that specific use added to the text. Gotcha. Thanks. Yeah, I, I was just going back to think about this 50-foot thing that I just threw out there, kind of. You know, maybe uh, the thing that would be discussed or considered by the committee uh, commission would be 50 feet from a, a residential structure, 25 feet from a property line. Because it's, it, it, I don't care if there's a backyard, you know, or, or like when you're looking here, there's some adjacent property that there's no development. But the complaint or the issue comes from someone living in a house and they put the play area right next door to their house at 25 feet away. Maybe it's something like that, a combination where it's 25 feet in general from the property line and 50 feet from an adjacent residential structure. I think just a gonna, thought. Just I a think thought. we're going to address that when, when the application comes before right. us. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what I said. So again, if the commission recommends just striking uh, the proposed uh, uh, paragraph number four, uh, you know, that's 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 take that recommendation to council. Do you want to reference at least the buffer section, which I don't think is a bad idea. I mean, unless it's un I mean, obviously any applicable codes are understood, but it can't hurt to uh, uh, identify it either. Okay. So how would you word that? You could just delete the first line, and then just start. Item four would begin with noise mitigation. Okay. What's the feeling of the commission on that? That's right. Is okay. that okay? Yeah. I would probably, Mr. Chairman, probably I'd probably like to tweak that a little bit. Noise mitigation preservation of the amenity for adjacent properties shall be addressed by application um, of at least the minimum buffer requirements. Something like that. Just, just so to make, just to, I just, I just, I probably just want to add a little qualification, just so that, again, those are at least the minimum requirements. There may be instances where the adjacent use may be somewhat sensitive, or, or, or you know, that to, to obviously, you know, uh, go significantly above those. So. Is that okay All right. With you All right. Sure. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion. If, if a motion is warranted. Uh, yes, we need a recommendation for City Council if you're prepared to advance it. Okay. Help, help, me, motion. With the, help me with the wording, Mr. Zeman. Well, let me give you a motion to see if it's okay. Motion to approve the code amendments to Chapters 1155.01 subsection D in Chapter 1135.04, as presented by the administration to the Planning Commission on uh, November 8th, 2018, uh, zero, I must be zeroing in, addressing specifically the noise mitigation and buffer requirement issues. So, uh, and, uh, so uh, pr the proposed, um, 11-3504-H4, H4. the first sentence would be struck, the second sentence would be kept, additional language, application of at least the minimum buffering requirements, et cetera, will be added, uh, and then obviously there is no item number six. I don't believe anyone sort of, okay. no, nothing. <laughs> I couldn't have been that thorough, please. You're very thorough. <laughs> Thank you. So my motion, uh, as amended by the legal counsel. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Sedoti. Yes. Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Snow. Yes. I was going to ask you to Thank read you. that back. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? You got a director's report, right? We do. 
Go right ahead. So, Mr. Chairman, we received a uh, phone call from the folks at Menor Rehabilitation. Um, getting the full name, Menor Rehabilitation Center. Uh, Norton Parkway. And Norton Parkway. Thank you. And uh, they are proposing to add about 24 additional parking spaces to the rear of the property. Uh, in speaking with um, the architect and engineer on the site, on the property, uh, they indicated that good thing they're getting more visitors than they were originally anticipated. And so they want this space for employee parking. And so what we were presenting to you tonight was, um, I guess, a question if you would prefer to see this as a site plan review item or if this was, um, if you were comfortable with uh, the planning staff going ahead and reviewing this and approving it internally. I, I would personally like to see it as a planning commission decision only because that's a very sensitive area there and I think we need to look at this. We, we will definitely, and, and, and they anticipate, you know, obviously having more full-blown drawing than, what, than what's being presented, but uh, we at least just wanted to bring it to your attention. Okay. Is that okay? Sounds right to me. Okay, good. That's it. You did a fine job. I have Thank a question. You. You're welcome. Go right ahead. Ms. Mitchell, <laughs> I noticed that the Starbucks corner over there on Tyler and 306. It's all leveled and it's fenced. And I noticed the realtor put up a sign on Tyler within the fenced area available. Is there something that has occurred or is Starbucks still going to be moving forward? Starbucks is moving forward. It is in reference to the restaurant, okay. Bravo restaurant. It's the same, it's the same owner. Okay. Remind, Thank you. remind him of his promise to do something about those trees they cut down in front of Bravo. Oh, yes. If you don't mind. Okay. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Go right ahead. Is there a second? Second. Here we go. Second.